Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about this. Um, it's a really cool book um, that I got for Christmas one year. It's actually from Costco. <laughs> I love Costco. Um, and it's ironic that I'm talking about this wearing a Marvel t-shirt, but shh, don't tell anyone. No one needs to know. It's just, it's a really cool book because it, like, if you love history, like I do, you will, you will really enjoy this book because it has, um, it tells, you know, about the history of DC Comics and comic books kind of themselves, really. Um, so here's the first page. I just thought that was cool, you know. View of the Batcave. <laughs> So basically, of course, in the beginning, um, comic books were all kinds of different things. Like they had just fun, the big comic book magazine, detective stories, you know, all kinds of stuff. It wasn't it wasn't superheroes, of course, until Superman showed up in 1939, and that pretty much Superman invented the superhero. Like that was the launch of the officially of the superhero genre, which, I mean, <laughs> like I said, this book's big and it's heavy, <laughs> so bear with me, but it, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. I don't even know if we'll get to all of it because, like I said, there's a lot. Like, Superman even had his own day at the, like, the World's Fair. That's pretty cool. In 1940, like that's how big of a deal he was or is really, because he still is. I mean, like he's the the first superhero. He's so like recognizable that even if you're not really into comics, like even if you don't know his name, which I find it hard to believe that some people out there don't know who Superman is just like by looking at him. But you'd be surprised. <laughs> so even if you don't know him, don't like know the name or anything, um, you just recognize him, recognize the logo, at least. And then we have Detective Comics, which, you know, um, that's where, uh, of course, Batman was launched from, was Detective Comics. And you have The Flash. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's a really cool, really cool book. I mean, they're just like, it's it's so, it's fun because there's like all kinds of memos throughout the company and like notes on um, storyboards and um, storylines and like production meetings and stuff that they've recreated in here. And then, um, of course, Wonder Woman was created in the... 40s um, by a psychologist nonetheless who you know complained about um, the superheroes that they had already created and that they weren't you know up to standards <laughs> so to speak let me see what they said exactly yeah for being unsavory <laughs> comic books like you uh, you think about what are what were in comic books in the uh, 1930s and 40s compared to kind of what's in there today. Um, you, of course, they had different values back then. They like um, were way more traditional. Um, so it's just funny to think that like comic books were considered unsavory, and they had like this whole huge um, thing. Like in Congress, um, they basically blamed comic books for, like, kids being uneducated and ruining the youth of America. <laughs> and so they instituted the co Comics um, Code of Authority, basically limiting what they could talk about, what they could um, print in comic books. Um, so, like I said, it's really, like, comic books have a really interesting history. Um and here's like Batman and his war efforts. And then like they have little things in here, like a Batman mask 
and a Wonder Woman button and the Justice League of Society, Justice League of the, uh, it's a decoder <laughs> that you can actually like use and uh, play with as, as a kid. Um, and they have like things like um, talking about the, you know, comic books um, and getting like a daily comic book strip in newspapers. And here um, it says to every kid who supports the March of Dimes, they'll receive an autographed Wonder Woman picture. So I think that's kind of cool, like in order, in an effort to get more, more kids to uh, participate. Um, and then they talk about how, like, even though, of course, you know, DC created Superman and um, Batman. But um, in 1945, like, the biggest selling um, comic book was actually, like, a, just a humor book. So, I mean, the superhero kind of, like, like faded away a little bit and they had more of just more of just like humorous books um and i think that's because like everyone you know having just gone through world war ii everyone <laughs> was like i don't really want something super serious like i just want to be entertained um and sometimes you know superhero books can be super serious um a lot of times they can be because it's all about you know, finding, and I, I think that's part of what it was about, is that people are like, you know, we just went through World War II, we're done, we're tired of fighting, we just want something light to be entertained, something humorous. And, like, they have this, that was a, a book that you could get, and it was sponsored by a clothing club. And you could get this little book of, like, activities, um, and it was a monthly magazine, and it features, you know, activities and articles and things like that. Um, and they also had, like, Western comics were, like, a, were huge. Because everyone was kind of, you know, fascinated with the, the West, and it had a, a big, you know, moment at that time. And they also, like... Um, like I said, humor comics were um, big. And then, then they talk about, you know, the new frontier of, like, radio and TV and um, having, like, the Superman, like, TV show with George Reeves. Um, it just, you know, of course, and that made the, like, superheroes popular again. But then, like I, um, like I talked about, you know, the comic books code of authority came along and were, they, you know, regulated it and said, you know, you can't say this or you can say this. And they basically um, blamed the comic books for the downfall of American youth. So they created the comic book code of authority to tell you, you know, what you could and could not do. But, I mean, like, they tried to, like, you know... To help educate and inform, they released little um, pamphlets and promos, like, you know, saying that basically this, this Superman was for the hospital fund, um, basically why you should give and why you should um, be careful in the forest. Um, so they, I mean, they tried, like, and <laughs> for example... They even printed in their magazines saying, hey, kids read our, our comic books. So if you really want to get to kids, if you really want them to buy your product or be interested in your product, you should invest in advertising in comic books, which, you know, kind of makes sense. <laughs> so basically they were saying by 1957, the comic book business had shrunk to like half of what it was. And um, 
basically it says too many publishers had built too many titles on too many things that the comics code had now done away with. <laughs> and Softer Fair was hastily like thrown together because they're like, oh, we can't talk about that anymore. Ooh, uh, hey, let's just put this out. Great. Done. I mean, in other words, they didn't like plan it out as much or think about it as much. They just kind of threw it together because all of a sudden they needed something, something to put out since they could no longer do what they wanted to do. So basically, and it says to help booster sales of the sagging Batman comic book in the 50s, they sent out this promotional postcard. Um, you know, it says best wishes Batman and Robin in the late 50s. Um, so I just, like I said, this little, this book is full of little things like that that I think is cool that they recreated and they um, reprinted. <laughs> and... When I ran across this, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Lois Lane actually had her own comic book, and it talked mostly about her, like, her love lives and um, <laughs> things basically to do with that. Because in an effort to get, you know, more girls to read comic books, I mean, it was uh, still associated with, like, a recognizable comic book, but it was more about, more focused on Lois Lane and like her love life and things like that. So as if girls wouldn't be interested in just superhero comic books. But regardless, you know, <laughs> it's just something they tried at the time. Okay, so when we get to the 60s, they talk about how, you know, if Superman um, built the comic book industry, Batman saved it, you know, because the Batman TV show, even though a lot of people, like, look back on it and think, oh, that is so corny. It is, but it's 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 just fun. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't enjoy watching that? I mean, honestly, it is just pure like fun. And they also were still trying to get you know girls interested in comic books, so they still did like romance comics basically. Um, and those have kind of always like were always at that point around, but um, like I said, they were trying to pull more um, people in, more uh, viewership, and so they were, you know, trying different things, trying to do what they could to pull more people in. And like I said, th this page I just think is really fun. Like it shows the uh, promo with the Batmobile and this board game <laughs> with the pieces for the based on the the television show. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, because of Batman during the 60s, um, superheroes became popular again. So, and uh, there's a little bit, I mean, there's more to talk about. And I guess I'll do this in, like, part two because I, I ran out of time. I didn't realize, like, I, I talked about this so much. But, like I said, it's a big book and there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about. I mean, obviously, I've just skimmed over it, but really you should, if you can find it, pretty sure you can probably still buy it. It was uh, published in 2008, um, but I'm sure you can still find it somewhere. I really highly recommend it. Again, DC Vault Museum in a Box. Um, it's just, it's a really cool thing. Like, like I said, they um, reprint stuff and they have like memos, actual memos from minutes meetings and um, things that they received. So, Anyway, um, probably like part two, um, I should be able to finish it because there's not that much left. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was a little like all over the place at times, but um, and I hope you join me for part two. Until next time, bye.